Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's Accelerate Your Performance podcast. I'm your host, Janet Pilcher. Thanks for having a desire to be your best at work and help your organization achieve success. This podcast is all about actions we can take to improve workplace culture and achieve results, and they're all aligned to our nine principles for organizational excellence. Last week, I talked about productivity and high performance. Today, I continue defining what high performance looks like and why it's important. We'll focus on what we can learn from athletes. What if we all had an athlete's mindset at work? And what would that look like? If you've not watched the Women's Softball College World Series, you've missed something special. I became hooked years ago when Florida State University's women's softball team won the World Series several years ago. It's something I look forward to every year. This year, I watched these young players battle through the almost impossible to get to the final game of the World Series with the number one team in the country, the Oklahoma Sooners. The Knowles softball team did not have a very good year. It was one of many disappointments. They lost the ACC tournament in the semifinals against Duke, snapping a streak of six straight conference championships. They entered the College World Series seated number 10, their lowest since 2013. Yet this team was six outs away from winning the World Series, and they did so by climbing unbelievable odds. At their first game in the tournament, they lost, which put them in the loser's bracket, meaning if they lost one game, they were out of the tournament. And they knew that people believed that they should not have made it to the World Series based on the year they had had. So some people had just already written them off. They didn't lose a game, and they battled their way to the World Series finals against Oklahoma, you know, the best team in the country. So they battled to get there in the World Series. And oh, by the way, the Women's College World Series is played in Oklahoma every year. So it was like a home game for the Sooner. There were about 12,000 fans, nearly all of whom were from Oklahoma, rooting for the Sooners. And what a coach FSU has. Alameda is not only FSU's coach, she's an ambassador for the game, for young women, to bring women's softball to prevalence. Alameda said, I'm grateful for the fan support, not only for Florida State, but for the game of softball. Here's what she said about her team as they were playing in front of the Sooner fans. I think our kids did an incredible job. We didn't let it bother us too much being in the fans of the 12,000 fans. It was more of a celebration of softball than anything else. She was just excited that 12,000 people filled the stadium to watch women's softball. As I watched the team play game after game, I saw a team never giving up, having confidence and enjoying their time together. And I kept saying to myself, man, Alameda is one great coach, one of the best. And her coaching and the traits of these kids got them to the finals. And if this adversity I've described wasn't enough, playing in the loser's bracket after losing the first game and playing the final game in front of a, a lot of fans rooting for the other team, FSU was also forced to play games that went past 2 a.m. due to inclement weather in Oklahoma City. They played to early hours in the morning, playing multiple games in a day and then getting little sleep to play multiple games the next day. And they kept winning. We can learn so much from these young women. Congratulations to the FSU softball team and to all of the young women athletes who sacrifice so much to be their best. So what are the traits these young women exhibit? The sportsmanagementdegrees.com describes 20 personality traits of high-performing athletes. Over the next several episodes, I'll focus on these traits. Today, I focus on six of them. Last week, I talked about productivity traits that help us define high performance. Those traits, along with the 20, can be used to assess ourselves and also create meaningful definitions of individual high performance. So let's review the traits to further define high performance, adding to what we learned last week about productivity traits. So here are six. High-performing athletes have self-confidence through blood, sweat, and tears. They have to sacrifice many things in life to be great. They stay confident to manage through the tough, stressful times to get to a winning side. High-performing athletes are motivated by the desire to win, to be better than their competition, to achieve beyond their personal best, and prove to themselves their hard work always pays great dividends. High-performing athletes have an inner desire to succeed. 
They are driven to do their personal best every time they step on the field of play, every day, every time, every minute. They desire to succeed. That desire comes from within. High-performing athletes are natural goal setters. They set realistic, achievable goals and work hard to attain them. They also know when to stretch to achieve those audacious goals. High-performing athletes know how to manage through discomfort. In fact, sometimes they're even motivated by that challenge, but they know how to set goals and they know how to take action to achieve those goals one step at a time. High-performing athletes have self-discipline. In the sports world, we hear coaches say, it takes 10 years of hard work to become an overnight success. Let me say that again. It takes 10 years of hard work to become an overnight success. And for athletes, that means great sacrifice of early mornings, working through pain, managing the disappointments, never giving up, and always knowing we can be better. And high-performing athletes have an intrinsic sense of optimism. To be the best, athletes believe that they can beat the best. Athletes who doubt themselves never cross the finish line in front. And optimism and self-confidence go hand in hand. I propose, however, that optimism drives self-confidence because optimism is the underlying belief that helps manage through the blood, sweat, and tears. We can work hard, be dedicated to be our best, but still not win if we fail to have optimism. When we walk out on the field of play, we are optimistic that we can win that the team or person on the other side is no better than we are. This takes me back to an experience on the tennis court when I was in my late 20s. This experience caused me to do deep work on myself. I was playing in a tennis tournament and got to the finals. That's relatively new to tennis in this tight community. And people knew people in those tennis networks. I had not had an opportunity to join a network or to be part of a network at that time. I just showed up and played in that tournament, and I felt so intimidated. It felt so intimidating. I knew most everyone around expected my opponent to win and, in fact, was rooting for her. My game of tennis was as good as my opponent's. My sense of optimism was missing. I lost 6-0, 6-0. I didn't win a game, yet I took almost every game to deuce, and then I couldn't follow through with the winning point to win the game. And at the end of the match, I walked to the net to shake hands with my opponent. I felt so embarrassed that I crumbled on every game. And as I shook hands, I wanted to leave quickly and get the heck out of Dodge. And then my opponent said, you're a talented tennis player, one of the best I've played. Your mind gets in the way of you being a winner. To this day, I'm not sure what I said, if anything, at that point. I think I just stood as if time had stopped. I don't remember the person I played, yet will never forget her for that moment. I'm appreciative of her words. Never underestimate the difference you can make in someone's life. From there, I made a promise to myself that I would do the deep work to gain optimism, to know that I'm as good as anyone on the field of play. It continues to be one of my biggest struggles in life. It will be something I work on for the rest of my life. And as a leader, I'm obligated to manage through my struggle with personal optimism because it is less about the effect it has on me now and more about the negative effect it could have on a team that I lead. I can't be a good leader unless I continue this self-work. We all have our personal work to do to be our best. I hear people saying that teams or people don't have pride in the workplace and pride is on us. I picture a graphic that appears before us in in many different circumstances, and it's the word pride with the words by each letter reading pride, personal responsibility, and delivering excellence. The FSU athletes and coach have pride because it was evident by their actions that they take personal responsibility in delivering excellence. And that feels good to a team, and it takes all players on a team exhibiting high-performing behaviors. The traits of the athletes guide us on how to do self-discovery work. That's how we grow pride in ourselves and our organizations. It's up to everyone on a team to be at their best every day. In this episode, I focused on six traits. I continue with additional traits next week. So this week, if you would, reflect on how well you and your teams live these six traits. 
stay confident to manage stress and obstacles. Work hard to win. Do our personal best every day, all the time. Set meaningful goals and achieve them one step at a time, knowing we can always get better. Work with personal sacrifice to do our personal best and believe that we can win even against the best. No doubt the FSU softball team assumes these traits. They always believe they can win and they can play with anyone on the field. They fell short on winning the trophy, but they did not fall short on experiencing a journey where they continue to learn, grow, and improve. They're better as individuals and as a team for their incredible journey. Congratulations to the FSU Seminole softball team. Thank you for tuning in to Accelerate Your Performance. If you're looking for more resources related to today's episode, head over to studereducation.com slash podcast. I look forward to connecting with you next time as we continue to focus on the nine principles for organizational excellence so that we can be our best at work. Have a great week.